All right, guys, today we have the Stryker SR497HPC radio, 10 meter mobile amateur transceiver. There's some of the features, seven color LED backlit faceplate, ultra high fidelity modulation circuitry. Yes, this thing screams. 90 plus watts PEP, up armored exclusive receiver protection, Advanced NBANL circuitry, digital echo and variable talkback volume controls, frequency counter jack for FC390 counters, dual Roger beeps, a striker exclusive, 10 plus KC shift, and a one year warranty. Guys, this thing screams. All right, on the back, you have your PA, you have your plug for your frequency counter right there. You have your external speaker. They have a fuse here. And this is 12 gauge wire, which is good. You want the bigger wire to hold more power. Nice heat sink on the back. Quick release plug for when you're slip seat or just don't want to leave it in your vehicle, which I don't blame you. Measurements are exactly about the size of a piece of paper if you want to get technical. Just about 8 inches wide from heat sink to front is about 11. We'll just confirm that here. Yeah, we got like seven and seven and fifteen sixteenths. And if you want to go front, right to the back, same thing. About ten and fifteen sixteenths. So, figure eight and a half by eleven is the size of the hole you're going to need to put her in. Um. It does fit a standard bracket. I got a standard bracket from the 955 here. You know, it'll fit in there nice. So there's the face of the radio. We're going to go over the face and the controls powered up on the on the desk. And we are going to pop off the bottom. It takes a four pin microphone. The stock mic they give you is pretty nice. And uh, yeah, this radio is smoking loud. Smoking loud radio. Give you a little eyeball on the inside here. I will move the camera. And um, on my version, right here is two jumpers. Here's your channel selector. Here's a ribbon cable. Okay, there's two sets of jumpers here. On this version, Putting this on the front set of jumpers was the ten was the CB radio conversion, and then put it on band D. So I know there's a bunch of different versions of this radio. I'm going to give you a little peek of the board. Okay, so this is the bottom of the radio speaker side. It's right here next to these two capacitors. These two electrolytic here, the ribbon cable. There is the back set, the front set. This is where you need to be if you want to talk on the 11 meters. Okay. It's got your fan in here. One, two, three, four. Your fan kicks on pretty quickly upon key up. And as you see, there's your bias voltage adjuster here. Okay. Look how small they are. Guys, if you don't know what you're doing and don't have a proper trimmer tool, stay the hell out of this radio. For those guys that want to know the big trick, where is it? Right here. Two capacitors here, right in front. Right in front. AM mod. Again, AM mod is right here. Right side of the radio, upside down. Where's your front? Follow this back. AM mod. FM mod. Right here. TX level is here. Okay. RX level is over here. Alright. You got one back here probably for the bias that I can't read. Right now from this angle. Okay. So you have a lot of little tiny trimmers. This looks a lot different than some of the boards I've seen out there on these 497s. This may be a whole different, 
you know, new revision or whatever. But that's what you got right there. Okay. They still have some connectors. I would make sure these connectors are pushed down. Okay. So there's your view of the board, which is what a lot of people want to know. What's that board look like? Where's the AM modulation pot? Where's the conversion? There's your conversion right here. AM modulation pot here. Now I'm going to tell you guys something right off the bat. <laughs> Do not take or get this radio from a hack shop. Um, just a minute adjustment of this AM modulation. I mean, a very, very tiny turn throws this thing <laughs> right into way over 100% modulation. Please get it aligned and tuned from a shop that uses a scope and an analyzer. I, I don't know much more to say. It's just, it's sad when we see these beautiful, good, nice, fancy radios being put on the market. And next thing you know, you got a hack shop out there screwing them up on the customer brand new out of the box. So, I'm just going to say again, please do not take your nice new radio to a hack shop. The best thing you can do with the radio... When you get a brand new, if you have enough brains to do a conversion, and in this one it's just moving a jumper, put a microphone on it and talk. That's probably the best advice I can give you if you're not a technician. Buy the radio brand new somewhere, put the microphone or a microphone of your choice on it and talk. Um, this one is removing five screws and moving a jumper. I think anybody that can hook up a CB or wire a CB microphone should be able to do a conversion on this. Don't touch or twist anything. Don't try to adjust that modulation trimmer tool. Uh, don't try to adjust that modulation because without the proper trimmer tool, you're not going to know where you're at. You don't adjust modulation by the meter swing. Um, It's just not, not the way to be done. So we're going to get the cover back on this. We're going to get it up on the bench. And um, once we get on the bench, we're going to go over all the controls, all the functions, all the colors, and stuff like that. But again, guys, I just this thing is an audio monster. Um, if you're going to purchase a 49 or 7, please, if you don't have a good technician, buy it stock. Buy it stock, convert it yourself with the jumper, move the jumper, get the hell out of the radio, and talk. I don't recommend you taking it to a hack shop. If somebody cannot show you your radio on a scope and an analyzer, run. Because all they're going to do is overmodulate you and make you talk four or five channels at once or two or three channels. It's just, it's not a good thing to splash people. So, all right, we're going to pause the video here. We're going to get her hooked up with some power and go over all the, uh, all the settings. Okay, so we have it hooked up over here. First thing I know you're, wanting, you're going to want to know is what does it do? So, low power, dead key. Got about a 5-watt carrier. And, and swing at about 22. So low power, I added 5 watt dead key, swing at about 22. This is factory power, I'm not going to touch it. High power dead key, looks about 30 on the 300 watt scale here. Yep, we got a 30 watt dead key on high power. And just about what they say, 90 PEP on a little whistle. Okay, this is the front of the radio. As you see, you got the nice round S meter there. Microphone jack here. Start from the top. Your talk back is the outside dial. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Hello. Hello. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Your talk back is the outside dial. 
Your power is the inside. This is your bands, A through H. Once converted, band D will be the band for CB. AM, FM, or PA are right here. Roger beeps, very simple. Not the fancy Roger beeps like in all the other strikers with the 655 and 955s. This is basically beep and beep beep. They're very simple, straight up old beeps. Beep, beep, beep. Noise blanker A and L up top, noise blanker in the center, and down here is off. 10KC switch is either off or on. We'll get over this button in a second. You got your squelch over here and you got your volume. Mic gain is on the outside. RX, RF power, RF for receive is on the inside. Your Echo does not have a separate switch to turn it off like the uh, some of the newer ones. So you're going to have your outside. It's going to be a delay. And your volume is going to be here. And you'll just remember, hey, you know, I usually run my Echo at, say, 10 o'clock. When you want to turn your Echo off, you just turn it off here. One thing I do like is this is a good, you know, this takes a good clunk. It's not one of those flimsy ones that just you touch them and they change channel this takes a you can hear it it's got a good clunk and a good click between channels so that's real nice it's real nice um, now to the color button as you push it in quickly it changes color okay we we'll go through the colors here So as you push the color button in, it changes color. If you hold it in, it adjusts brightness. So there's like a fuchsia type pink. If you hold this in, it'll get very bright. And then as you'll see, it'll start dimming by itself. Okay. So holding this in dims the radio. Okay. There's red. Now, when you key up your radio, what this has is an AWI flasher, antenna warning indicator. If your SWR is high, this little light will flash as you key up. If your SWR is okay, the light will stay solid. So when we key up here, make sure our monitor is off. We know we're on a clear channel. If I key up, that will light up, but I'm on the same color as this right there you can see the different color right here where my pointer is right there it's like a green so what's also neat you can change that color here and keep the other color of the radio the same how you key up your mic key up your microphone and push the button and this will change there's green blue dark blue red see it's changing here okay I'm just holding the mic keyed and I'm pushing this button. And that changes the color of this light inside. i got my finger out of there so I can show you guys on video. So now the, the radio is blue, but in here is green. Okay, I'm holding the radio. I'm holding the microphone keyed up. Okay, so now it's like a fuchsia. Now it's red. I let go, and I can change the radio to like that, like a clear. When you key up down here, you see it's it's changing colors. Okay, hard for the camera to pick that up. I don't know why. So I always like a radio to be like a green. That's my preferred there. And then I will bring it down just a little bit. About there. And then when I key up, I got like a reddish purple light in there. So that's a nice little feature. Um, Housebound. I will run this with the static 575M6. Vehicle bound, uh, <laughs> recommend the SRA 19 or 8. These things are getting very popular. They're actually increasing in price for some reason. These microphones, they're a good mic. They're built quality and they can take a stinking beating good tech and you want the striker sr 497 hpc my only advice would be buy the radio stock do not pay for the conversion
if you don't trust the shop. Move that jumper inside and talk. Sure, a good shop can do alignment, receiver alignments. Yes, we understand that. But when you start seeing here in spread coils, swing kits, they don't show it on a scope or an analyzer. It's your call. It's your money. But the Stryker SR497HPC, these are screaming little radios. You will get amazing audio reports on these radios. It's not worth it to have a hack shop go in there and just play with the watt meter. Oh, watch. Wee, wee, wee. Look at the power. It's not worth it. You want to dump a 300 and something dollar radio and have a chance of being damaged or something or splattering channels. That's your call. It's your cash. Do what you want. But if you don't have a reliable technician that can do things properly with a tone generator, a scope, and an analyzer, guys, move the jumper, put your microphone on, and enjoy it. SR497 radio. Try again for radio check. I don't think anybody's out there this morning. Turn the monitor down. Break one eye for radio check. Thank you. How's the audio? Is this nice and loud and clean? Clean, clear audio, or are we all muffled up? All right, brother. Thank you for your time. Enjoy your day and stay safe. So, that's it. Striker SR497 HPC. Guys, if you want a screaming little AM rig, something that's going to be loud, proud, and scream out of the box, get that wallet out and get one ordered.